talking some about the idea of discipleship, connect with that as stewardship, our gospel here today, uh, taking account and asking the Lord's grace uh, to use well the time that we have. That builds off what we heard last week with the prodigal son, that our experience of conversion uh, begins in many ways with that encounter with the love of God, especially in those moments where we most need that grace and forgiveness, where we most maybe struggle to um, overcome the challenges that we face. And so we begin Mass with a calling to mind again of that mercy of God, bringing those prayers, those um, challenges that we have experienced, and asking for the mercy of the Father to embrace us. And so, brothers and sisters, we take a moment as we call to mind our sins and ask the Lord to prepare us to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise you, servants of the Lord. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, both now and forever. Praise the Lord. High above all the nations is the Lord. Above all the heavens is his glory. Who is like the Lord our God, who is enthroned on high and looks upon the heavens and the earth below? Praise, Praise the Lord. He raises up the lowly from the dust. From the dunghill he lifts up the poor, who seek him with princes, in the prince, with the prince, princes of his own people. Praise, Praise the Lord, who lifts up the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, first of all, I ask that supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgiving be offered for everyone, for kings and for all in authority, that you may be a quiet and tranquil life in all devotions and dignity. This is good and pleasing to God our Savior, who wills everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as ransom for all. This was the testimony at the proper time. For this I was appointed preacher and apostle. I am speaking the truth. I am not lying. Teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. It is my wish then that in every place the men should pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Serve both God and man. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What we look for in a chef is an artist more than a scientist. That there's a certain aspect to cooking into food, but what we really want is not just a bunch of blobs of protein and vitamins on our plate, but we want something that tastes good, that comes together well, that looks uh, appealing to us. That there's a difference classically between arts and sciences. Sciences are things that can just be crunched out like mathematics. You can just sit down, calculate the correct numbers, and boom, you, know, you have the right answer. But when we're looking at an art, you have to have a certain sense of um, finesse to it. That there has to be this ability to distinguish in which flavors work together, what sort of design is appealing and what is not appealing. That it's something that uh, builds again on what it is that we can know and what we can study, but it has a certain a deeper realization where it's become ingrained where someone just kind of by looking at something can give a certain assessment. Is this appealing? Is this not? Does this work? Does this not? That when we look at stewardship, there's an aspect of it that we can look in terms of a scientific approach. Uh, in the Old Testament, there was the tithe. The approach of the Old Testament was tithing. 10% um, to be given uh, to, to the temple. That in the New Testament, in the church, there's not a set tithe. The way that it's, it's articulated in, in the precept of the church is to give according to the means. That this idea of stewardship, again, is more of that approach of an art. That it wants to be honest, it wants to be, um, again, founded in some sort of, of understanding of reality. But that it moves more deeply than that. It looks at not just, again, putting an objective number on something, but a change of spirit. Not just an external calculation, but an internal reality. That there's very possible to follow something externally without the internal development. That when we're looking at this idea of, of, of uh, uh, authentic discipleship, it has to move to the interior. The first reading, um, the prophet Amos talks about people that are following the, the, the letter of the law but that they don't have that interior change. It says, you know, hear this, uh, you who trample upon the needy and destroy the poor of the land. You say, or when will the new moon be over, you ask, that we may sell our grain, and the Sabbath that we may display the wheat. The Old Testament, there were uh, prescriptions against doing certain things uh, on, certain, on the Sabbath or other feast days. And so you know, here it's representing merchants that know that, okay, we can't conduct this sort of business on the Sabbath, but as soon as it's done, we can start. And so they spend that whole time just thinking about the moment when they can be done with uh, their, their time of devotion and prayer and get back to cheating people and, and, and making money. That, of course, the prophet, as Christ himself would, uh, challenges that to say, okay, you know, they're, they're obeying a very small letter of the law, but they don't, again, have that approach, that art of stewardship. That it's not something that's changing them, so that they have that internal ability to see, okay, you know, what is it that I'm doing with my time, my talent, my treasure, you know, the classic three, um, how is it that I'm, I'm treating that of others? Jesus in the gospel also gives the example of a dishonest steward, one that is looking for mercy, that comes to realize, okay, I've been caught, he's been mismanaging the funds, he's gotten caught, um, he's going to try and be merciful to all the people that owe his, his master money, so that they hopefully will be merciful to him later. That late in the game, you know, he's trying to catch up. And in a sense that, as we mentioned with the prodigal son last week, each of us in a way can encounter in ourselves those moments of, of that dishonest, dishonest school. And then we ask, you know, what is that that we then um, are motivated to do? Are we motivated to really see, okay, you know, how is it that I get back to uh, respond well to the gifts that I have? Or do we, again, keep our focus elsewhere? You know, what would it look like if just, you know, in the first reading as they are so eager to be done with the Sabbath so that they can get back to their, their business? Um, what is it, what would it be that if they were so eager you know, to be done with the business that they could get to a time of prayer, uh, of, of, of adoration, of reflection? That they would uh, be eager to see not so much how much could they cheat others or how much could they get more from others than they have to give, but to say, okay, you know, how can I best use the resources that I have for the good of others? 
what's the most good that I can do uh, with, the, the, with the time and the, the, the gifts and abilities that I have. But that is, again, that interior change which develops within us that art or that spirit, that habit of stewardship. That it's a change, again, that is, is really looking, uh, that's, it's built in prayer, but then it has to move into action to say, okay, you know, what is that spreadsheet look like? What is that, that budget of my, my life look like? Whether, again, in terms of finances or in terms of time and talent. What is on that sheet right now? You know, that if we were to draw up that account, uh, what would it look like? What would it look like in terms of um, that assessment? How is it that we would then um, compare that with our, our priorities, with our, with our values, with our, our, our goals? That's you know, one of those really challenging things that to be attentive to those small details, and you know, Jesus says the one that's trustworthy in small matters is trustworthy in great ones, is what builds it. And it's said that our, our, our habits basically are what develops us into the type of person we want to be. What is it that we're investing in with our time, our talent, our, our resources each day? You know, what does that budget sheet look like? Or do we have that sense? Can we develop within ourselves that discernment to be able to say, yes, this in my life, this is investing in something that I want to invest in. This is something that is bearing good fruit for myself and for others, uh, for the love of God and love of neighbor, as our, our opening prayer said. Do we have that sense of where we need to say, okay, this isn't there. That conversion of heart, which is, again, moves, starts maybe from that objective evaluation, that kind of more scientific approach, but then what the Lord wants to develop within us then is that habit of thought. Again, to become that art. This uh, Sunday, when I want to mention a couple things. I'll say a little bit more at the end of it, but uh, want to thank the stewardship in terms of our parish. Uh, this year, we were able to make the ADA goal at both parishes, which is great. There's obviously challenges and other things are different. And uh, again, at the end, I'll give a few more details on that. But also, and uh, want to commend that we've been more engaged this year with other. Um, Donations with collections with different things. Our works of mercy projects that uh, we've been calling our, our kind of work, our, our parish life brainstorming group that includes within that the different works of mercy. The giving through the envelope. So there's the envelope in the box of envelopes if you get those that is for works of mercy. So those we give into different causes. So uh, towards the beginning of the year, we did a couple for uh, Living Alternative uh, Pregnancy Resource Center and for Birthright, which give a different kind of immediate emergency support. We did uh, collections this year through well, through the, um, the fund for tornado relief uh, in Kentucky, through the, uh, the diocesan collection for the needs of Ukraine, for uh, more recently for the uh, school supply needs that we did over the summer. Uh, we are, uh, we have one coming up uh, here soon. There's info in the back for Catholic Charities. Uh, we did last year, and again this year we are Kind of September Work of Mercy project. We did a donation for the Emergency Housing Fund for um, the uh, Community Service Center in Rantoul and for the Dominican Sister Retirement Fund um, at Springfield, which are the sisters who served at St. Malachi School for so long. Um, you know, all these little things. Again, these little things uh, that we've been able to do to support some of those through donations, again, through that, that monthly envelope, some of those through practical items that have been dropped off. Other service things um, in terms of work and things like that, but again, to to look at that and to say, okay, again, what are how is it that we're using our time, our talent, our treasure? And so there's that that kind of that mystery in a sense. Where again, this year, uh, in addition to doing more of that outreach and doing more of those things, our Sunday collections also have gone up. That are <laughs> helping to provide provide for the basic uh, needs of the church as well. That we can be afraid sometimes where we think, okay, well, if I support other people, if I, if I reach out and go beyond myself, I'm not going to have enough. We're not going to be able to uh, make ends meet. But often the fact is the opposite. That as we increase in generosity, again, as we don't look so much just as how can I get more from others than I give, we start looking at how can I use my resources well for others, we find that there's that mystery of, um, of grace ultimately. But of, of abundance, that you know, the needs are taken care of, and that then we have, uh, by, by using well the gifts that we do have, the capacity to do both what we need to do and what we would like to do, or what we would um, desire to do, that we can begin to align more and more 
Okay, what does that sheet of assessment of our life look like with that sheet of assessment of what are our priorities? What do we want to have at the center of our life? So that, again, prayer uh, is the foundation of this, this awareness that that develops within us. St. Paul in our second reading, that great exhortation of to live to, to prayer, to persevere. Um, that prayer, again, drives that, and then discernment transforms that prayer into um, action. So that's, I think, our question today. Are we an honest steward? Or are we a dishonest steward? How does our stewardship match up with the, the heart of Christ? How does our stewardship match up um, with, with those goals, and the, those priorities that we have? Where is it that the Lord is inviting us uh, to de deepen and develop you know, that habit, that art of stewardship? Gathering together our prayers into uh, our prayer of faith, uniting with the church throughout the world, together we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, light of light, true God of true God, true God of not me. Not substantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and him, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was his heart with the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under conscious power. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have the living. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is his Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and the Southern Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. In the life of the world to come. Amen. In confidence, let us raise our prayers and petitions. That Christ cleanse every disciple from greed. <clears throat> cleanse every disciple from greed. To love and serve him before all things. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. That national and local civic leaders govern with justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who serve in categorical ministry find their own faith deepened by the truths they share. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That parents, teachers, and other adults model the trustworthy behavior that they expect from young people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this faith community be generous with their time, talent, and treasures. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions written in our parish book, for those on our cancer quilt, for those who have served in the military, living and deceased, for vocations to the ordained and consecrated life, and for Pat Justo, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of the church here and throughout the world, let us pray the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in heaven. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God forgive you and be on your way. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, trust in the God of Satan and all the evil spirits who brought about the world's Mighty God, we lift up these prayers. We ask that you hear and answer them according to your holy will. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Offertory then, December 6, 14. Lord, whose love and humble service. Verses 1 and 3. <laughs>
receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift off your hearts. Lift off the Lord our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world, never arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonders, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink me, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Louis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am worthy of your sin under my word. God, may you save the word and my soul.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those who renew at the sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple of quick announcements. Um, we have uh, a lot of different forms and papers in the entryway. So we have this week on Thursday starts our diocesan novena for St. Therese for vocations. So if you're interested, take one of those. We'll do those at our daily masses, but that will get start this Thursday, go to our feast day October uh, 1st. We're doing the next two weekends or the collection for the Catholic Charities. There's a paper that looks like this. Uh, it has the items, basic home, home care items. The diocese has a, um, called St. Nicholas Charity on Wheels, a van that goes to different towns. Um, they're in Rantoul on this, I think the first Tuesday or second Tuesday of the month um, that provide need and different resources. We will, we're starting tomorrow our children's religious ed. There are application forms in the entryway. That'll be from 10.30 to 11.45 Sunday mornings. Um, that includes preparation for First Communion. This is not a confirmation year, uh, but we'll have the uh, first grade through eighth grade classes. So that information is there. Tomorrow we're also having a cookout for a young family, young couple. There's info in the bulletin. That'll be five o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Again, all those different things. And then last, but to mention a little, uh, we have also our balance sheet. It won't have the red ink on it. That's my notes here. <laughs> but it's for this last fiscal year, from July of 2021 to June 2022. I'm also going to stop the video on the, when, on, we posted online for, for this part. So if, if that way, 